Hello, Florian. Hello, Vincent. Nice to meet you again. Yeah, nice to see you. Yeah, I hope you uh, welcome back from uh, Paris and Paris Photo after this good uh, moment you spent at Grand Palais Ephemer. Yes, I um, definitely came back good. And it was a great experience to be there and participate and meet a lot of interesting people. So you are the second winner of the uh, Saif Carte Blanche Students uh, Award, uh, which will uh, help you to uh, uh, develop a project, an ongoing project uh, that you propose to the jury. Uh, can you tell us about this project? Uh, yes. Um, I, the, my project, well, the working title is Reshaping Masculinity. And um, it's about men who are in a state prison in uh, Germany, in East Germany. I wanted to do a project about masculinity, and um, but I was like, it's such a broad topic that I was like, okay, I have to find a, a frame where I can do it in. And um, I I did some research, and then in Germany and based in France as well, there's like, I think more than 94% of the prison inmates are men. So my idea was like, okay, why don't, why don't I go to prison and speak to those men? Because there's a big indifference with like 94% per, per, per of those people being men. And uh, to speak to them about what maybe is wrong with masculinity or what needs to be uh, reconsidered. And um, that's basically what my project is about. And so why did you choose to, to, to go mainly in, in jail? Because well, in, in your proposal, you uh, wrote that 94% of people in jail in Germany are men. So you think jail is a place where you can find a kind of good representation of a masculinity experience, I would say? Well, I think there is um, definitely stereotypes on um, about jail who also affirm to masculinity in uh, like typical aspects of masculinity being like a hard man uh, in control of yourself and um, which are also represented in prison. But I also think there's a dynamic being like them having something, having done something wrong, like because they're in prison, but also having the space and the time to reflect on it. So it was like, I think they are. Um, that was also something that interested me that they have time to reflect on their life and what went wrong. And since it's ninety percent men, it definitely has to do something with them being like a man that they are in there and how that plays part into their um, reflection. And um, and there is also a, a few interesting dynamics. Um, uh, by uh, I've read I don't know how it's called in Eng English I don't know how it's called uh, how it's called in French but from uh, Michael Foucault he write about um, he wrote a theory be, theory about prison and there's pretty similar parallels about how a prison works and how masculinity is um, con uh, restricting men in modern society and that, that was also something which interested me and uh, I just wanted to find out. And so I could understand that for the moment you just work in, in, in one prison. Or, or did you choose uh, the people, uh, the men? There's, they, there's two groups of people I work with. First of all, is like this is an addict, um, addict station where, they are, where people are uh, who recover from drug addict, uh, addictions and they have a lot of therapy. And I was introduced as part of their therapy and... Uh, just went on to do some kind of like they have a lot of art therapy as well and my my photography project was kind of involved or indulged in that and the other group they just um they I had a put a poster up in the prison and they um uh said I want to participate in your project and that was also very interesting for me to see how who says yes I want to participate in a photo project uh, about masculinity and what that yeah was an interesting point to see what brought them there and what uh, made them interest. And can can you explain how you work with them? What what is their kind of uh, specific organization? It, well, yeah, it's a the first of all prisons are very bureaucratic 
places. So it's a lot about just when you come, how much you don't have a lot of time with them because, and I can't move free, freely in the prison because I don't have the key and they don't trust me that much. And so it's always like someone got to bring the inmate to me and then um, I'm having a specific time period with them, mostly an hour. And then first of all, I just speak with them. I talked like in the beginning, there was even times where I didn't photograph. I just spoke to them for an hour, trying to get to know the person, trying them to get to know me because they have to trust me um, since it's, uh, yeah, they're inmates and the prison is trying to protect. Like it's in Germany, and I know how it is in France, it's also very hard to do or difficult to photograph prison inmates with their face. Um, since the prison wants to protect their privacy and their um, just protect them from being printed as this in, inmate or like for like protect them from bad press. And since like the prison allowed me to photograph them with their face, I also have to gain their trust to and try to get them to understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So in the beginning, it's just getting to know each other and uh, speaking a lot, speaking about their experiences. Yeah, from there on, I just try to develop pictures with them. Like it was a participant, participative project, or is it? Since um, I w work with large format, so I have to like setting up my camera takes like five to 10 minutes. And then we try to somehow from the feeling we had in the um in the in the talk we talked uh that tried to develop a picture idea or even maybe in the um they can, we already had a picture idea while we talked or he talked talked about a uh uh some several a uh, specific experience or memory and i was like how did it feel and could you re insinate that and um yeah that's the way And so at the end, you have portrait. I mean, portrait uh, most of the time without without the face, uh, still life or, or or place of their bedroom. But uh, uh, do you also have testimonies? Do you write something or does you record yes. something? Um, I'm actually right now. I'm on a stage where I am trying to to bring more layers to the project uh, than photo photographic things, um, and I. Have I'm have yeah I already like collected testimonies of them or um, letters where they asked uh, answered several questions, and um, I'm still concepting and developing or trying to develop another idea. And so, what is interesting in your in your project is how you you are trying to to show this fragility of masculinity and to and maybe trying to lead a change in mentality and and uh, you will use a kind of uh, original object which is a magazine that you would like to do i i don't know maybe at the end of the project or uh, in, in a few in a few months uh, which will be a free distribution magazine hopefully distributed in jail so to allow uh, men in jail to access to it and maybe to think To their masculinity yeah. but do you think so it's very interesting to to have this kind of free distribution but do you think it's certainly interesting to have it in jail or also outside um i think it's both interesting but my main goal in the beginning was like give something back to the place where i basically took from like where i made my project about masculinity because i come in prison as like an outside perceived person a participant i come in there as a photographer And um, those people who participated in my project, they they gave me a lot. Like just they told me their stories. They let me photograph them, you, and then um, let me photograph them. And then I was like, I wanted to give something like I didn't just want to go to prison and then take this project out to the outside world. And that's how, and then let it be in the outside world. And um, so I want to try to give something back to prisons. And uh, that's why I'm mostly focused on distributing it in prison, but because I'm like I'm sure it's gonna be somehow distributed in the outside world, and it will take like till it take place in the outside world with like exhibitions or also distributing the magazine in um, yeah. But what what do you think can be the utility of of, of this magazine uh, in 
for 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 this man um i hope that i just that it like starts st ticking like no, how's it called a tipping stone and then they start maybe thinking speaking with other people and um i also want to like involve like t trying to to um make it like enable and discussion like they could write letters to towards me and then we could discuss and i think i hope in the end some like some a few people are just gonna take something from it and be like okay maybe there is a way out like there is a problem i think that's the, the main thing to establish that there is a problem and then that things need to change and that they don't feel so alone with it and going to start to speak to other people about it and then trying to find a solution. What is interesting is that you, you, you decided for this project to, to work for, with anal analogic photography with a large format camera. So this means you will need time to work on this project. I mean, it's, it's not a digital project, uh, a traditional digital project. So can you explain this choice? The choice? Um... It's it's actually a very selfish choice because it's um I just want to take the time to make those photographs because um they're important to me and when I photograph on large format that um I need to slow down I need to be more patient to be more concentrated to just because I can maximum take like I don't know in an hour four or five images and um. So, yeah, it's just for me about concentrating, like thinking, what do I want to have in a frame? What do I don't want to have? Um, yeah, that's my, that's why I, I just like it. I like the process. I also like the process of not seeing the image instantly and instantly having a feedback. There's something about like trusting that you have the photo or you, and then it comes out differently or uh, sometimes you also do mistakes and then you don't have a photo and then the next time you have to try not to recreate it but find another solution and be like extra sharp to not mess it up and i just like the the analogy of it mm -hmm. and in, in this project would, would you have um, any uh, specific inspiration you would like to talk about yes i there's um like Uh, a, a guy called uh, a photographer I really look up to um, who's called Filippo Romero Bellatran and his series Dialect um, where he worked with um, in a very similar way he worked with um, um, immigrants from North Africa who immigrated into Spain and are in a kind of limbo state and um, that's my main inspiration and then I also looked um, at a lot of Mohamed Borussia just like with them um, Yeah, staging and uh, inscenating those kind of um, series that are like, and then I looked at a lot of portrait photography, like just in general, Rienike Dijkstraat, Wolfgang Tillmans, yeah, such kind of people. But uh, thanks to this um, Safe Carte Blanche Étudiant uh, program, uh, you will develop this project, and uh, in this first jail, and hopefully you will be able to go in another jail in Germany. Uh, how long do you want to do this project? And w w what is the end, if there is an end? Um, I don't know yet, actually. It depends on how it evolves, because it, it, it's a, a very nice to speak to them. And I like, like the stuff, I like the, um, I just like the act of um, getting to know new stories and um, seeing different um, aspects to that uh, topic. But, um, I don't know, maybe a year, maybe five. I I really don't know. Okay, so hopefully we will uh, uh, meet you again before five years to to uh, to have the next step of the project. But it's uh, it's looking very interesting, and uh, we really look forward to uh, to meet you again to speak about uh, where you are, maybe in a, in a few months in this project. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm I'm also looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you very much, Florian. Thank you, Vincent. See you soon. Bye-bye.